Hey, this is Jim. It is 9.18 a.m. in San Francisco, California on March the 22nd. Please note that all discussions, analysis, and information presented are for general information on educational purposes only and should not be construed as financial or any other form of professional advice. So I'm going to start off with a real quick view of the Nemoy Terminal. Dead in the water here until price can move back above the daily trigger, which is now at $4.43. I'll remove the uh, monthly trigger and the weekly trigger, and then we'll zoom in to this uh, sort of pinning period here and take a look at where we are right now. You guys can see that violet. I'll go ahead and go full screen. You guys can see that violet line, which is the hourly trigger, and the blue line, which is the daily trigger. And you can see how um, the people who are suppressing price have been able to turn this away exactly where they need to time and time again, including basically top tick uh, the other day. So... Um, again, until we move above that um, uh, daily trigger, we're, we're dead in the water. I'm going to show you guys um, some specifics about how they manipulated this, especially last Friday, March the 18th. Um, some of you may know I've, I've been capturing the time and sales and recording it every day for eight months now, have, you know, well over a terabyte of um, data. And it's, it's allowed me to go through things after hours and really pick through things and try to figure out what it is that they're doing to so easily manipulate the stock. And, um, and I know most of the tricks at this point, I'm going to show one to you guys right here that's that was really, really obvious. So um, what we're looking at here is I've pulled out round lot trades um, most of you know, only round lot trades print to the tick. Uh, so if it doesn't print, if price discovery doesn't print to the tick, then it doesn't print to the charts upstream that most of you track. And more importantly, the charts that drive all of the technical indicators that people use. Um, the majority of people use the off the shelf technical indicators. And a lot of people have also built you know, their own homegrown algorithms um, that run off of or piggyback some of the different um, out-of-the-box technical indicators that, that are mostly momentum-based. MACD, Stochastics, RSI, um, all of those. So when these guys are able to dark pool trades at really strategic points in time and points uh, of, of price, potential price discovery, what happens is that they're gaming all of those technical indicators. It's sort of a reverse engineering approach, not that hard to do. You just have to think like a criminal. And um, obviously, someone out there or multiple people are really good at thinking like criminals because they are criminals. So real quickly here, I started to take a look last Friday, um, March the 18th pre-market so this is starting at 628 my time this is west coast usa add three hours for uh, new york and i wanted to kind of look at round lot trading activity pre-market and then going into uh the opening bell and after the opening bell obviously you would think that you'd have much more naturally have much more activity um after the opening bell than you would have prior to the opening bell and especially on a Friday options expiration and especially on a monthly expiration. So in theory and in, in, in reality, historically, you have a big, big volume and a lot of trading activity. So the, some of the things I'm looking at, are it's much more important to look at trading activity than absolute volume because it's, it's when they choose to send um, orders discoverable round lot orders, trades rather, into the lit exchange versus hiding them in the dark pool that provides uh, them with the ability to easily manipulate price. So here we go. Uh, this is starting at 628 and 21 seconds. That's the way you read that. And here's a round lot trade of 300 shares uh, at $4.27, okay? I've dropped off the first two here, and you can just see the, the seconds here. Um, the hour minutes are gone, and here's the seconds. So, again, 21 seconds. Um, you have a, 
a, a round lot, 599 shares. Again, during the same second, round lot for 100 shares. And then right here at 26 seconds, so 628 and 26 seconds, uh, they hit the market pre-market with uh, some high-frequency trading. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trades during a single one-second timestamp. Okay, so ten round lots, tra tra ten ten round lots trade, and they print to the time and sales. Right, only round lots print to the time and sales. Then you move down here. Here's you know 31 seconds, 33 seconds, 33 seconds. All right. Basically, what ends up happening is you have 21 total round lot trades print to the data window and tick during a full two minute period. But what I want to concentrate on is this, this statistic right here. During a single one second timestamp, they trade 10 round lots. OK, this is pre-market. Now let's jump to opening bell. OK. We have at one second, at 6.30 and one second, we have this big bulge NYSE reported uh, volume and trade. Then we have this round lot right here, one more round lot here, okay? This is one second after, this is four seconds after, okay? These, this one, two, three, four, five, these trades are called condition derivatively priced. They don't find their way onto the data window and into the tick chart, okay? So now we've got five seconds without a single round lot trade printing to the time and sales of the tick. Then we have at eight seconds after the open, we have this 400 share round lot. At 10 seconds after the open, we have this 322 share. So only four total round lot trades are posted to the lit exchange during the first 11 seconds of trading on a Friday monthly options expiration, okay? Remember, they printed 10 round lots in a one second time period pre-market, but yet the first 11 seconds of trading, there were only four round lot trades posted, okay? So they're dark pooling all of the buying pressure um, and only showing in the lit exchange what they want to show to prevent any true price discovery. So, you know, this is really an impossibility if you're thinking in terms of natural um, human trading activity, um, and especially on an options expiration. So, in addition to, you know, this huge smoking gun, which compares, you know, 10 round lots in one second to only four round lots in 11 seconds after the bell rings. The following Monday, March the 18th, we had 175 total round lot trades during the first 11 seconds. So pretty staggering. Here's, here's what they do if they want to attack um, if they want to attack with, you know, what some people call ladder attacks, you know, I've, I've shown you guys burst basket selling activity and bid bombing selling activity, um, and just stepping price down, down, down pounding with high frequency trading. What I found is that, um, to really make it even easier to pound the market to the downs, AMC to the downside specifically, um, is that they will will have a lull in prints to the tick um, and their their unnatural lengths of time to not see a single round lot uh, print to the tick. And so that's sort of a, a red flag that they're they're dark pooling uh, trade during that period. Then they'll follow it up with aggressive high frequency trading um, on down ticks to really gain that advantage and manipulate price to the downside. So here are a few examples here that I pulled, um, again, from 315 trading, um, dark pooling and high-frequency trading selling attacks. So um, 
remember we only had a tiny number of round lots that were printing during the first 11 seconds of trading um, on March the 15th. Here's why. So you have a full six seconds with no ticks printing. Then once you, you move into 15 seconds into the open, we had this four second period. Then again, they follow it up. This is like, you know, hanging out the left jab and then this is the right cross right here. High frequency trading, 23 trades in one, in one second on down tick. Then here's another big lull, 10 full seconds with not a single round lot printing to the tick. Clearly, they're moving um, actual intended buying activity into the dark pool. Here's five seconds. Here's 14 seconds. And you can see the time period here, 630 and 36 seconds, 631 and, and 48 seconds to 52 seconds, 51 to 05 of the next minute. And then, um, uh, you know, a full 14 seconds of, of not having any prints um is is a you know it's an easy tell what they're doing there now here's where they follow up with the high frequency uh at 6 36 and 11 seconds 52 trades in one second all down tick there's 31 trades in one second all down ticks at 28 seconds after 37 seconds after um 46 trades in one second on a down tick. So again, these are all um, your, your dark pooling here, creating this uh, artificial lull, and then you're just pounding with, um, you know, this could be burst basket or bid bombing, whatever, but they're all uh, down tick trades in a single one second. So obviously 52 trades in one second is, is high frequency and, and, and so are those. Um, there's the final note there. It's, um, uh, I went back and I looked on, on Monday compared, uh, the trading activity as far as round lot prints to the tick. And we had 175 round lot trades during the first 11 seconds on Monday, um, March the 18th compared to just eight on the Friday. And that's, the, that's in 11 seconds. But remember where this thing looked really bad was there were only four round lot trades in the first um i believe that was eight seconds i believe that might be a typo but you guys get get my point that um it's unrealistic to have more trading activity that prints the tick pre-market right t t two minutes before the opening bell um then you have in the same time period after uh, the opening bell rings. So that's what I have from my side, you guys. Again, um, until and unless price can move above this daily trigger, which is slowly declining, um, we're dead in the water here. And you can see they're just, um, you can see by the daily velocity there, they're, they're just ping ponging and pinning. Same thing when we uh, render the hourly velocity. They're just wedging us and pinning us. And, um, really, really trying hard to prevent any upside price discovery. Again, the main takeaway is that they're dark pooling buying demand and they're sending into the lit exchange, the selling pressure, the selling supply. That's it from my side. Uh, I'm continuing to report things to the authorities and working to build out um, add information and video proof and evidence to my whistleblower report. I'll keep everybody posted. That's it from my side. Good luck.